Hello all, Uzo here. This is going to be a video covering when you should cap the flag and when you should not cap the flag in Eye of the Storm. I'm going to be starting off here with my Enhancement Shaman. I'm going to be going offense. I'm going after DR at the start of this video. And the reason why is because I'm duo queued with the Evoker that I have targeted there. They're going to FR. So I feel like I can go offense when I know that I have somebody that I can trust that's going to go sit our base. Because the most important thing for your team at the start of Iron Storm is making sure that you hold your base. Okay, I'm rolling into DR here with Friendly Rogue. I'm able to stop the cap on the DK with Frost Shock. And then the Rogue is stealthed and he goes up there. So what I want to do is position myself. So I distract the DK and the Priest. So I'm positioned such they're facing me when they fight and that allows the Rogue to uh, stealth cap right behind them. I get around them, I knock them back down, and then notice that we have uh, successfully assaulted this base, and we have successfully defended FR, and we have the flag as well. You can't really start the match any better than this. But unfortunately, uh, what's going to happen here is that the person that has the flag on our side is going to cap the base right there. All right, so they cap that base, and that's a really, really bad cap, because when you have two bases, you accumulate points very quickly. So it's best to hold on to the flag and just get, soak up as many points as you can from holding those two bases for as long as you can. Also, it was a bad cap because DR was not even fully capped in our direction. So we lost points there that we would have had otherwise if, we had, if he had waited to cap that flag. If you cap the flag while you have one base, you get 175 points. If you cap that flag while you have two bases, then you get 250 points. That is extremely important to know, especially when you're coming down towards the end of a match to know whether you should cap the flag or not if you're holding it. Before we move on to other flag cap situations, I want to talk about something that I mentioned in the previous video. And that was if you went heavy offense after the enemy base, it could backfire on you. If you go heavy offense over the enemy base and you fail at taking that base, then there's a good chance that you could lose your base, you could not be able to take the enemy base, and you would lose the flag as well. So that's exactly what happened here. They went heavy offense with five people. They had two defending, so they only had one mid. They weren't able to take FR, so they were put in a losing position right off the bat. The only thing that saved them was the person that capped the flag. I've used this footage before, but I want to do some commentary over this because there's another reason why it's really bad to cap the flag when you have two bases. So this uh, priest runs in here, they cap the flag while we have two bases. Of course that's bad because holding two bases gives you a lot of points if you can manage you know, to maintain that. But it's also bad because it resets the map. So when they cap the flag, score stops, the map resets, the bases switch, and from that point possible for the enemy team to get those two bases then they would have two bases and if they hold on to them they could win the match from there so you can take you can literally take a match that you're winning and cause your team to lose if you cap the flag at the wrong time here i've taken mt and i'm guarding it we have both bases and friendly druid has the flag i have to stop a hunter from taking the base and uh, unfortunately, what's going to happen here is that the Druid is going to cap the flag. Again, a bad cap, you know, not only because we had two bases, but he also capped it before we fully uh, capped MT, before we turned it red. So we lost the points that we would have had from that base as well, you know, from that cap. Now, the people that are doing this, they're not doing it out of malice or spite. They just don't know any better. So it's best to try to be patient, maybe, you know, try to help them uh, through some raid sends. You know, maybe they notice and they'll stop doing it. This was almost an identical situation. We had two bases in the flag, but this time the Druid actually does hold it. And then after uh, we win, he sends a thank you message. There are situations where you might even want to hold the flag when you only have one base. Here is such a situation. So we managed to get the flag in the middle and uh, Monk gets it and he's running away and then we're trying to tell him to hold the flag. We do this since we're ahead, so we're trying to run out the clock. Hold, tell him to hold, tell him to hold. Tell him to hold it. 
Don't cap, don't cap, don't cap. I can't type. With one base, you can cap at 1,325 points. He continues to hold it all the way, you know, uh, so he could have turned her in earlier to win, but it's okay because we end up winning the match. All the fucking CC, man. Yep. Notice ah. that we won this match even though we were beat on damage and killing blows. That is not uncommon if you outplay the enemy team on objectives and flag caps. Take a look at this scoreboard. Who do you think won this Eye of the Storm? Alliance or Horde? Well, it turns out Horde won it. And we won it because myself and my healer, we controlled the objectives and the flag caps and we're able to win this match even with HK differential this bad. Okay, so that is gonna be it for this one. If you actually want to watch this full BG that I'm talking about here, I'll have it linked at the end screen, along with a playlist with other videos that are in this do's and don'ts series. Take care, everybody.